Ian Kite is a Canadian archaeologist who specializes in the Stone Age history of the Middle East. His work is focused on a site in the Jordan Valley near the Dead Sea, a place known as Dra. Kite is a co-director of the dig and works with an international team of archaeologists. They've uncovered the remains of ancient dwellings that were clearly more sophisticated than any hunter-gatherer shelters. They believe this was a small village, one of the earliest permanent villages anywhere in the world. People were starting to put down roots. What we would have had was this village of I don't know, 40 to 50 people living in the same place. We would have had a series of oval huts that would have been partially cut into the ground. Uh, and these would have been very much the, the first time people settled down and lived in communities in a really extensive way. When they radiocarbon dated the site, they discovered that the village first emerged 11 and a half thousand years ago at the same time as the end of the drought in the Middle East. But how was it possible to feed an entire village if times were so hard? After four years of digging at Dra, the archaeologists believe they have an answer. It lies in this unique structure. What you can see here is the outline of a mud wall coming all the way around here. And in the inside, we have a series of upright stones that have been chipped in such a way where you can see a notch on them. And there would have been a series of beams over top of that with a floor across it. And basically, you would have had a dry, humidity-controlled environment where they could take grain, they could take any plants, they could dry them out, put them in here, protect them from insects, protect them from moisture, protect them from water percolating through. What that ends up being, from our perspective, is probably the world's first granary in some form, a place where they're able to store food in a particular location on a year-round basis. The team at Dra believes the granary was an oval-shaped mud wall building at the center of the village, a place where grain could be stored collectively. And the grains that were being stored were primarily wheat and barley. While other plants were no longer available, these cereal grasses were hardy enough to survive and durable enough to be stored for years. But if this was a time of scarcity, how was there enough grain to fill a granary? The answer suggests a radical shift in human behavior. At some point during the drought in the Middle East, people started growing their own food. Unable to maintain a mobile way of life, they would have stayed close to any source of water they could find and planted new fields of wheat and barley around them. rather than just following food sources around different locations, for the first time what people start to do is that they bring these resources back to them. Not just as harvested food, but they're bringing them as seeds. And they're growing them next to their village. And that's the first time, really, this is the first time we see this anywhere in the world. The Stone Age people of the Middle East were becoming farmers the first farmers in the world. Without realizing it, these new farmers were changing the very nature of the crops around them. With every round of planting and harvesting, They'd favor ears of wheat and barley whose seeds were the biggest, tastiest, or easiest to harvest. 
traits that were useless to the plant in the wild, thrived under human cultivation. They interrupted the cycle. They interrupted the normal uh, environmental cycle and started to select these individual plants and basically rewarding those that were going to be most profitable to them. And so even though it was accidental, once that whole process started, people are starting to control nature. The way crops are changed by human interference is known as domestication. Today it happens in research labs, with scientists selecting genes and breeding crops to be ever more useful to humans. It's a very precise, deliberate process, but not so different from what the first farmers were doing unconsciously thousands of years ago in the Middle East. The transition to farming was clearly a decisive turning point in human history. People who remained hunter-gatherers couldn't produce anywhere near as much food as farmers, and also couldn't produce much food that could be stored. They were always going to be at a chronic disadvantage. Now I needed to know where else in the ancient world people had become farmers. If I could establish links between the spread of farming and the spread of civilization, I'd be well on my way to answering Yali's question. There are only a few parts of the ancient world that developed farming independently. Not long after the Middle East came China, where people grew another high-yield cereal grass, rice. Pockets of farming also emerged in the Americas, based on corn, squash, and beans. Later in Africa, people farmed sorghum, millet, and yams. And in most places where farming emerged, a relatively large, advanced civilization followed. But there was an exception to the rule, an area where farming didn't bring the same benefits, the highlands of New Guinea. For 50 years after Westerners colonized New Guinea, they thought the highland valleys in the interior were uninhabited. In fact, they were the most densely populated part of the island with one of the oldest systems of farming in the world. Archaeologists now believe that people have been farming here